One of the most common asked, uh, commonly asked questions in Revit, something that's not too terribly intuitive and gets kind of easily forgotten, is uh, what do you do when you've got a curtain wall and you need to have some sort of access, you need to provide a door. You'll notice that when we looked at the curtain wall panels, I only had two options. So if I tab my way into this curtain wall panel, for example, and look over here in the properties window, I only had the option to do a glazed or a, a um, solid curtain, uh, curtain wall panel. If I want another option, a door, I have to kind of do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go to the insert tab, which is up here. And I'm first going to load a special type of curtain wall panel in, which is a door. And once it's loaded into my project, then I'll be able to access it using the method I just described for swapping view panels out for spandrel panels. So on the insert tab, if I click load family, I need to navigate to the doors folder. And then at the top of the list here, I'll see that I've got a few special types of doors and these are all marked as curtain wall doors. So I'm just going to choose this double. Uh, maybe I'll take the one that has a little bit of a framework around it, some uh, visible mullions. So I'll click on open. It'll look like nothing's happened. It won't really uh, seem as though the tool has worked properly, but you will actually see that option uh, to swap out this panel for a door once you've actually selected a panel. So once again, if I hover over the edge of this mullion, click on the tab key until I eventually see the panel and select it. Then if I go back to the properties window and click here on the type selector, I'll see that listed here in gray is the just sort of a summary of the family file type. Right below it, just with the white background, if I click on that, then you'll see that it'll swap that panel out so that I now have a door. Now, if you're wondering if that's code compliant, probably not. It's not likely to get a lot of people out of the building when it looks like that. So this is quite often what happens when you place a door panel in a curtain wall is you'll see that the panel isn't properly sized. So remember what we talked about before, which is that the panel isn't adjustable unless you alter the grid line. So if I want to make this panel a little bit more appropriately sized, I need to go and find the grid lines. And I'm going to adjust this one above it first, and then I'll adjust the one that's right at the top of the door. So remember, if you use your tab key and hover over the edge of a mullion, so just tapping the tab key instead of holding it down, you'll be able to find that grid line. And when you click on it, make sure first that it's not pinned. If you see a little thumbtack icon, you'd have to come up here and click on this little unpin button. So make sure it's not pinned and then you'll be able to see the dimensions. I'm gonna click on this top dimension that tells me that that grid line is 1,033 millimeters away from the bottom one. I'll set it to something really small, like let's say 300. You'll see it move up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this grid line. So I'll once again, just Use my tab key, find the grid line. It's letting me know that at the moment, this panel is only 1,033 millimeters. Um, generally speaking, in a code, um, a code reference will require that this is, say, 1,900 millimeters or 2,100 millimeters, somewhere in about that range. So I can just highlight that, and uh, let's go for just an even two meters. And there we go. Now we've got some slightly more appropriately sized doors. Okay, so that is how you place a door and a curtain wall.